I know you're all going stir crazy and I'm over here having hot flashes going stir crazy. So I guess we get to commiserate together. I am bringing you today a video that I needed to talk about for a while because I have been getting so many questions when I've been doing a certain amount of tutorials where they want to know what the difference between setting powder and finishing powder is. So that's what I'm bringing you today. I hope that this kind of lays the bag of snakes out straight and that it helps you to understand when you might want to use finishing powder and when you might not want to, when you might just want to go in with a little bit of setting powder and that kind of thing. So I hope that you enjoy today's video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, I would absolutely love to have you here as a part of our YouTube family. That and I also want to express in this video, since it's the first video that I have done since um, we were told that we were going to be self-quarantining again until April 30th. I'm here, guys. I am trying really hard to put out good content for you. If there's things that you've been wondering about that just kind of cross your mind, put them in the comment section. This particular video was one of those videos where everybody was going, tell me the difference, you know, because it can be a little bit confusing. So if there's anything that you want to see particularly, particularly, let me know in the comment section and I will do my very best to be able to uh, bring that content to you and get it out to you so that we can kind of all be entertained together and interact together. Okay, today my top is from Ross and I bought it long before all this happened so I can't link it. I apologize for that. And my earrings too. I Most of my earrings are from eons ago, so I can't really link that either, but I can link all the makeup that I'm gonna be talking about. So let's get into this video, the difference between finishing powders and setting powders right now. All right, so let's just start out with setting powders. Setting powders are exactly what they imply by the name. It is to set your makeup, or you can wear it alone, really, if you want to. It could be to just, you know, set your face, kind of blur your face during the day. If you're going to work and you're one that doesn't need foundation, bless you, because I need a whole lot of help on my face. So setting powder can be anything. I've recently talked to you a lot about the e.l.f. Sheer Tint Finishing Powder. This does say finishing powder on it. I don't consider it a finishing powder. What I consider to be a finishing powder is something that would kind of give you a tiny bit of a glow and it would um, finish your face off in such a way that you looked flawless. Setting powders can achieve that for a lot of women. Unfortunately, because I'm so dry, it doesn't. What setting powder does for me only is it helps to take care of these big looking pores and some of my wrinkles. I have huge pores on my chin, over the top of my nose, right here on my cheeks and my forehead. So that is where I'm going to use my setting powder at. I'm, I'm gonna be dusting it in, that, in those areas. So what you will see when you put on a setting powder, which is what I'm gonna do right now, is you're gonna see a bit of blurring effect to that area. So I don't know if this is gonna come across on camera the way I want it to, but basically that's what it's gonna do. It's gonna take down any shine, it's going to set that makeup down, it's going to blur out your canvas and just make it look more perfected. I, in the summertime, use a lot more uh, setting powder than I do in the wintertime. In the wintertime when it's so dry, I have to go really super light and rely more on setting sprays than I do on um, setting powders. But in the summertime, and especially when I started into menopause, it's like my makeup just melts because I'm so warm because of menopause. Um, and so that for me means that I need a better setting powder. I did very recently do a video on my favorite setting powders, which I will link for you guys. So I really just kind of want to reiterate that that is what setting powder is. It's something that looks more matte. It's something that blurs out your pores. It's something that keeps your breakthrough at bay. I get breakthrough right there. Um, on my chin crease and then around my nose, I get breakthrough. So it's those kinds of powders that are going to help keep you set down. A loose powder that I absolutely love is the Maybelline Fit Me powder. And then I also love the Laura Mercier translucent powder for that. And one of my very favorite, which is, I've been told, I have never had this, so I don't know, but I've been told that this is a great dupe 
for the Charlotte Tilbury um, powder that everybody loves so much. So the Flower Beauty, this one is one that you do have to order online, but believe me, it's worth it. This is my third one. Okay, so now what is a finishing powder? Why do we need a finishing powder? Do we need a finishing powder? Well, the short answer to that is no, you really don't need a finishing powder, but they are pretty powders to have on hand. Now, can a powder be a finishing powder and a setting powder at the same time? Short answer to that is yes. And the great example of that are powders like the Milani Prep Set and Glow. This is a powder that I've been using for years. It is a powder that has just the tiniest bit of satin and you're not gonna be able to see it on camera because powders are something that are hard to demonstrate. But this one has the little bit of satin look to it. So when you put it on your face, when you're normal skin, it can easily set down your makeup. If you're oily, it can still easily set down your makeup, but you might have a little bit of breakthrough with it. But Prep Set and Glow from Milani is one of those ones that I feel like you can't go wrong if you pick it up no matter whether you're oily to dry. It's just a powder that can really be utilized well in your makeup collection because it's one that can go under the eyes, it can set down your makeup, anything like that. And especially in the winter months when we're really dry, we need a little bit of glow. This is great for that. So that would be my actual number one choice. I feel like I've got this with a pointer, this little going on here. Okay, so I also want to point out that there are those high-end ones that are finishing powders. And this is an hourglass palette that I've had since last year. And these two powders right here are their ambient powders. And those are finishing powders. They have a tiny bit of a satin sheen to them. They don't really show a glow on your skin. They just really have this effect of being able to perfect without showing matte. So that is what a finishing powder is. But you can also group finishing powders into the group of, okay, do they have a little bit more of a glow? Can you use them as your highlight powder? Well, absolutely can. My very favorite that I've ever gotten, and I know this is high end and it's a little bit more expensive, you guys, but I talked about this in my recent video about foundation is the Lancome Absolute Powder. This powder, it just perfects your skin and it gives you a beautiful, beautiful glow onto your skin. And I really love it for that. I think it's one that is exceptional. It would last you forever if you ever want to make an investment. Because I know on my channel, I talk a ton about drugstore, but if you're ever wanting to make an investment where you're just wanting to splurge on something that is really high end, but worth it, it's the Lancome Absolute Powder because it just gives you that beautiful aura about your skin where you're a tiny bit glowing you're a tiny bit luminescent but you're not over the top but then we get into ones that maybe have a little bit more glow those are considered setting powders too my favorite drugstore setting powder like that is the essence pure nude and i know that this is so many's fallback for their highlighter but this essence pure nude highlighter is so pretty you guys and it can be used as your finishing powder and i'm just going to dust it across that powder brush and then i'm going to show you just come down the nose just tiny bit and across the cheeks this can even be used to set the under eyes and across the chin. This gives you that dewy, glowy, lit from within look where, you know, like bridal veil makeup. I just, I love this stuff. I think it's so, so good. It is so close. I had it upside down. It is so close to the hourglass finishing powders or ambient finishing powders. It's so close to those that I would hardly ever go out and buy another one of those. I love those and I like to buy those in the palettes when they do come out each year, just because I like to have it and this is my job and I love collecting makeup, so I do like those. But that is a really good example of what a finishing powder can be. Now, a while back, everybody was going gaga over the glow powder from Flower Beauty. Does everybody remember that? This is a beautiful powder. It does come in the glow satin powder and then it also comes in the regular just setting powder. And this was so glowy that I felt like almost it wasn't one that I could use as a finishing powder because it just made me look too much like a disco ball. Again, I don't know if you're even going to be able to see this glow or not. 
probably not but it just really is a beautiful powder if you just want to stay on these high points and not hit the areas where you might have too much uh, texture because that's really the problem with finishing powders that get glowy or even a highlighter that gets glowy is the texture can show up as you age and that's really not what we want we want to have flawless looking skin without showing up too much texture so this is another one that I recommend this is super finely milled really really super finely milled and I didn't show you guys I should have let me show you guys the color of it hopefully you can see there okay so that's the color of it it's more of like a skin toned color than anything and I just think it's very pretty it's a very very pretty powder but it does have that sheer satin almost dewy look to it when you put it on your face okay so here's where the line gets drawn between okay this is a highlighter and this is a finishing powder and that's when Laura Mercier came out with her candlelight glow powder at first I thought this is going to be a beautiful finishing powder as far as just giving you a radiant glow which is what everybody expected but what ended up happening with this is they went too far with the crushed pigments and it's a beautiful powder don't get me wrong i think the powder is gorgeous it's it can go for just about anybody's skin tone but you guys i think that almost immediately you will be able to see what i'm talking about can you see that glow okay it's just too much even though it is you know candlelight glow this is quite a big little tube if you were just using it as high or not tube tub as if you were if you were just using it as a highlighter it's a big tub of it because this is my setting powder and i just got a mini of it this lasted me forever this is going to last me even beyond forever so that's where the line gets drawn for me when they start to look a little bit too much like that that glowing highlight look because if i were to put that glow right there all over my face i'd look like a grease ball i'd look like a disco ball and you can imagine since i'm really dry skin how that would look on somebody with oily skin throughout the day you'd just look oilier and oilier until you were like okay i hate this powder it's going in the garbage but i think that really what happened was that we just got confused because she brought it out in these big sizes so I feel like we just really needed to say hey this is not really a candlelight lit from within look this is more of a really glowy powder that needs needs to be used as a highlighter so hopefully that answers your questions if it doesn't let me know in the comment section any questions that you have about the two setting powder is what sets our makeup in place keeps it in place all day long gives us a matte look blurs out our pores and then the finishing powder is what can give us an, a glowy look a dewy look a lip from within look a look just like bridal makeup where you want that really soft blurred effect but you still want that lighted look to your face so those are the difference in the two. I hope that it was easy to understand. Please give me a thumbs up if you did like this video. Hang in there, guys. I'm right here with you. I love you all so very much. And I will catch you all in my very next video. Bye, guys.